You point to me like I'm not gonna know. Hello. Oh shit, Jason, this sounds so bad. It's not, it's not gonna sound as bad to them. I'm it telling you, it's told, only the headphones. My voice the microphones just ruined, are working just fine. My voice just ruined my own ears. <laughs> Hello. These these headphones have somehow progressively gotten worse. It's the I'm Minnesota Pubcast. Sure how, but, uh, that happened. Hi it's a guys. Minnesota podcast. I'm excited uh, to be here. Are you excited to be here? I'm excited to be here. Yeah, I'm pretty tired, and I've had like three glasses of, of combination liquor. So, <laughs> not even just I've one. had, I've had, um, I had a Fulton beer earlier, which doesn't really count because I pretty much. Oh yeah. God, I love that song. Because I pretty much biked it off, so that doesn't count. And <laughs> that then does I, help. I didn't have a drink at home, and then I um, biked after my work thing to have a quick dinner with friends, and. Uh, I don't know. I don't know where the story is going. Oh, I had one. I had one cider, and then I drank a glass of water. That what? What a concept! When you're drinking alcohol, mix in some H two O. But I think because I'm tired, life changing. You know how many miles I biked today? <laughs> how many miles did you bike today? I biked twenty two miles today, Jason. That's 20, pretty good. Twenty two. I used to do these crazy thirty mile trips. Oopsie, that, sorry. Yeah, turn that fucking thing off. Uh, 22 miles today, and that's city riding, right? That is just straight up all around. Just what uptown or what? No, Where were you? No, I rode to work from uptown to downtown. Okay. And then from downtown, we took a 10-mile bike ride kind of around, like, down to the U, down to Seward, like, back up kind of the Greenway and along the Hiawatha light rail. Couldn't have picked a better day to do that. Oh, my God. It was perfect. And we stopped at Fulton for a beer. This is a work still thing. I have been there. Oh, it's great. You love it. How and many different beers do they have going right now? 20? No. Last? Um... 10 to 15. Okay. So like one tower? Is it one tower of taps? I don't know. Okay. I, you know, I don't really pay attention because I normally don't pay attention at breweries because I don't drink You're beer. You're not drinking. Yeah. Yeah. But I did have a beer today. I had, I had three quarters of a beer. It was great. What would you have? Um, I had their their farmhouse something X-Pad. or another. Uh, nope. Not the expat. It was the, it has almost kind of like a French name. Like the, uh, Ma- the Ram- Mary Pa or Ram- Mary Pa. Yes, or, a randonneer or something. Uh, what else? Did I, I did have? not have the randonneer. That's up there, though. Anyway, um, anyway, okay. it was good. It was great. And, no, Fulton uh, makes good stuff. Really good stuff. And not complicated, just good. Mm-hmm. I like it's not, you know, it's not like they don't try too hard. It's just really no, yeah. good no, beer. None of it's over-the-top stuff. Mm-mm. Yeah, absolutely. It's just really good fucking yep. beer. That Fulton Blonde, I, I, it, that beer sells anywhere you put it. The totally. People love that beer. Yep. And then I took the uh, Cedar Lake Trail home, so under Target Field, Back to the Greenway, mm-hmm. back to Lake Calhoun, back home. And I biked part of the way there with my coworker, Dan. Guess how many miles per day Dan bikes? I, I, I can already tell I don't like this guy. <laughs> how many how many miles a day does he, he fucking He bikes go? 50 miles per day. Why? He bikes 25 miles in wow. from Shakopee or wherever he lives, and then he bikes 25 miles home. <laughs> Fuck that, right? Well, what does he do when it rains? It takes what? the bus. Okay. He, he hasn't driven for like a year. See, I'm. Tr- I want to hate that. I want but to talk cool, shit right? about that. It's I really, cool. I kind of envy it. What, what's wrong with that? Nothing's There's wrong. Nothing with that. wrong I, with it. I think it's co- really. Cool. He gets a workout every single day just by going to work. Yep. The, the the negatives are the obvious. It's just it's weather and you know when it's ninety yeah. degrees or raining that would suck. But no, I, I I can't come up with something to say negatively about the guy for that. That's, no. There's nothing wrong with that. He's great. Yeah, that's actually kind of cool. He's yeah, he's uh, you know, he he's sponsored and or used to be sponsored was on a team and shit like that. So oh, so he's got all the gear. Oh yeah, like, but I have all the gear and I'm not sponsored. Like I'm a, you know what I mean. Like everyone who at least bikes like has a road bike that clips in, like has the fucking gear. See, like, I I you can't fuck around. I I went pretty hardcore for a summer or two biking and I was doing trails and street and I never went gear. I just never what do you had mean, to do what's it. What's gear to you? That the tight shirt and the bad hat and the biker shorts. Oh, I just can't do it. I do the I do just my workout clothes 
like my tighter workout clothes because yeah. it's more comfortable. Well, and it's aerodynamic. I mean, that right. just makes sense. I don't have but a jersey, You don't have though. to go buy. Right. That's what I'm saying. And I think the every jerseys guy. Are, I mean, they, they're helpful. No, of course, because they're going to be lightweight and sweat wicking and all that. But I can wear just a T-shirt, too. Like, it's not. I mean, I, you can wear, like, an athletic T-shirt that's going to be the same thing or even a polo. Like, it's, I don't know. I just, I think it's weird that you dress up to get on a bike. But. I dress up to go walk around on a golf course, so I can't really right. talk shit. You, every sport has uniform. their uniform. Yeah, yeah. Totally. I mean, and it is, it is built to help you most with that sport. But what I'm saying, I think, is that when it comes to amateur status, bikers wear the uniform of the pros like as early as anybody in any other sport. You know what I mean? Like, I'm trying to think of how you compare but that I'm, to I'm going to wear sport. basketball shorts when I play basketball. I'm going to, I'm going to, when I run, Are you wearing I'm a have... jersey, though? Like, are you wearing a no sleeve tank top jersey because you're playing basketball? Like, do you have to have that on? No, right? That's kind of what I'm saying. Like, you don't have to have that on to play basketball. That just happens to be what they wear. And you don't have to have that on to bike, but right. it is comfortable. Right. So that's all I'm saying. I'm not even talking shit. I'm just kind of saying, <laughs> guys, do you really need it? That's all. I'm not. I'm. I'm again. I'm not mad about it. it doesn't fucking it's affect the me. I don't care. It's the biking gear. But there's a. There's but a I will biking say, click too. I have. I've. You know, ridden you know twenty miles like to St. Paul and back to a bar or whatever with friends, and I'm like, whatever. You know, what? because I'm riding, I'll like wear more casual stuff. Like I'll wear just like comfy pants that yeah, like, yeah, don't yeah. snag, and like a lightweight t-shirt. Not comfortable. It's not comfortable to fucking ride in. It hits on the spots it's not supposed to hit. I get sweaty. I always sweat when I work out. Like you're going twenty miles. Like you're gonna no, you should get sweat. gross. Yeah. Why am I wearing? Like if I'm biking to get distance and to like go like let's go for a bike ride and then the the result of that bike ride is nachos and a beer i'm not i'm not dressing for nachos and a beer i'm dressing for the fucking bike ride you know what i mean yes and like my workout gear is the most and then like today i wore a workout tank top and i was like i'm just gonna wear my workout tank top that i wear to the gym what, and then i realized what is a you know is like, that like a long sports bra basically like a sports bra that comes down farther what is a workout tank top i've never a, heard that expression it's a just a tank top that's made out of workout gear. So so it's just that sweat. Yeah, it's a wicking material. But it's a tank top. Okay, okay. What are you talking but about? I just Have never you heard, heard a girl say like a, a yoga workout top, tank top. Or like when people are running in tank Maybe tops. yoga top even. But I've just never heard. Oh, I, I've just never heard workout work, part. I've never heard that part. On like it's top. a multi-use tank top. You like you can wear it for yoga. What? Is there a tank top you wouldn't wear on a bike? Well, I, this is my point is I put on this tank top that I would wear for yoga or for running. It has wicking material. It's made by Nike. It's a Nike top. Yeah, yeah. I, I know what you're saying. Like a multi-purpose. But then I lean over on my bike and my boobs are out. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I was, I, was I was wondering what the negative was. And I'm like, I'm riding with fucking work here. And I'm like riding home and someone shouts out. He's like, you're beautiful. And I was like, it's because my tits are out. I'm like, this is the point of the jersey is when you bend over, nothing's hanging out. You're tucked in, like you're comfy, but it's still, the air is still like circulating through your, you know, body so that you're still getting the breeze. God, to be a woman. Uh, it would be so difficult. It, it's, it's this actually, that, I didn't care that much, but no, it's no, no, a little no. like. But that's just really, a weird like, really aspect really of life like, that no guy deals I with. Ride the, I, ride my, I was riding my low road bike where I'm literally bent over the handlebars. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I'm not sitting up like this. <laughs> like this sitting up and riding is one thing, but I have another bike that does that. This is like <laughs> like the racing bike. Well no, it's for distance. If you're going distance, you want to be uh getting you want to be aerodynamic and therefore your boobs are hanging out. That's uh that's <laughs> it's awesome. not very aerodynamic. Well that's not with the boobs hanging out. That's gonna that's gonna hurt you. That's, why I need the jersey. that's, that's what they call drag. Uh <laughs> This actually ties in a little bit into that uh, Aziz and Sari thing too, and I'm trying to think of why. What was he? Oh, because he was talking about if you're gonna take if a girl wants to take the perfect selfie for a dating site, oh. it's it's above with a bunch of cleavage, and then there's like three other things that had to be perfect. And and every guy that has been on Tinder knows exactly what he's saying. Oh, like there is sure. just five things that, and we are sucked straight to those five things. Like why there's do you nothing think I always around. make us make me take the photos of us? No, I know because I don't think about being above. I don't think about any of that stuff that doesn't. Here, I'll take a selfie from for our show tonight. It's Th from the right put, angle. Yeah, take it and throw it up on Twitter right now. I mean, there's there's at least two people listening live right now. Wait, Nobody knows we're doing a show right now, but. Okay, wait. I don't have the um... <laughs> See, the, the, the struggle right here. She's trying. She's trying. People trying but, to but take a I selfie. I just ha I have a crop top on, so I'm trying to get. Is that the lighting doing here? Probably. 
See, we I'm are in a dimly a lit studio. No, that one's not so good. Boobs aren't in it. <laughs> well, it's just it. you have to like cut your shirt to do the perfect, like what he was saying, uh, the, the perfect selfie. Yeah, let me get right on that. And, and, and again, and we'll get to this later, but I also found it interesting that it doesn't matter what you really do as a guy almost. Like, you can be super it good does. looking, but I mean, you can just be a super good looking guy and take like just a classic picture. Oh, but sure. Girls will 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 swipe left on that shit for all kinds of different reasons. Whereas the guy will just be like, boobs, right? Boobs, right? You know, like sure. We're so Neanderthal in that way. Uh, I don't know. I've seen, I've seen guys swipe right for girls that are perfectly good looking. Oh, no, don't get me wrong. I swipe right for all kinds of different... No, swipe left. I'm sorry. Oh, oh yeah. No, and I do that, too. Where I'm like, well, what was wrong with her? And they're like... Eh, eh, eh. We, we got to get to that. Too many choices. That's the other part that we need to talk about when we get to the Aziz stuff. But shall we... Should we I mean, we're in a pretty good mood right now, especially with a couple of beers or drinks or whatever, but I think we do need to go a little bit depressing and talk about the news, the top story of the day. It, 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 we talk about race so much on the show that I think it at least it deserves Who's our that? attention. Who's that? That's someone famous. I'm showing Jason a picture. Uh, right that's now. Joe Quenville, the coach of the Black Chicago Hawks. Blackhawks. Yes. Well, my friend's mom just met is him just hanging him. out at a bar with him right <laughs> yeah. now. That's that so cool. God, that's cool. By the way, congratulations, Chicago Blackhawks. I was cheering for you the entire Chicago way. Blackhawks. Congratulations to the Golden State Warriors as well. Absolutely, Steph Curry taking down LeBron. And you know what? I hate LeBron. I've hated him ever since he left Cleveland, but. He's the only reason that was at all interesting. That guy is so fucking good at basketball. He's he is he is a true talent. Um, don't care if you're the best player in the world, though. You don't say that. By the sure way. you do. No, you don't. No, you okay, don't. Fine. It's called class. Have you ever heard Tiger Woods, Michael Jordan, Wayne Gretzky? Uh, just heard of a good baseball player. That's, I mean, the best player I've in the world. I've never heard a guy once, like after a game, take a question and Man, go, I'm the "Well, I'm the best in the world." In the world so uh, blah blah blah. No, I'm not worried. Like no. No, fuck you. We get to call you the best in the world, and you are the best in the world. But it's, isn't that isn't there a little bit of like class in just letting the in other the, people call you that? Is there class in the NBA? Well, well most... thank you. That's why Come I'm on. not my uh, not my favorite sport. If you haven't noticed, we don't talk much NBA. Here, refs, not a lot of hoop talk here, on the old pubcast. Call strategically call call fouls so that it makes the game more interesting. Not because it's actually in a real. A real penalty, a real foul. Excuse me, I hate saying the word foul. It's a hard word <laughs> to say. You do say it like I say Vegas. A yeah, bit. I, I can't say it. foul. 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 How many letters are in that word? Four. Or how many it's syllables? Hard. Foul. foul. <laughs> There's at least a W instead of a U in foul. there. Foul. Uh, <laughs> But no, that, that that yeah, no. There's so many problems with the NBA uh, it, that we don't even need. We don't even have time to get into. Them. Yeah. Um. No. But all right, let's. <laughs> we, we went from dating. Let's try to segue <laughs> we went from, from that dating to the best player in the world. Now let's go back to now we're to nine people shot killed. <laughs> no, that's fun. We can talk about disease and sorry before we move. No, on to I the... don't. I don't want to. I want to. I want to touch on the race thing quick because I don't know how long it'll go, and I'm hoping it's short, but. And there's not much for me to say about this. To me, first of all, okay, the, the question that this brings up to me, and I really, I, I don't know if Julius was here tonight, Julius Collins, he's, he's been on the, the network, um, but he's been freaking out about that South Carolina doesn't even have a hate crime law. And, you know, they South fly Carolina their, still flies their Confederate fly their flag, flag on their state capitol. And we obviously, because you and I wouldn't talk about it on the show if it weren't the case, we do have a race problem in this country, and it has never died. It's, it's, and it's going to be there for some time to come. But I, I saw a headline recently that, that there was a poll of black people taken, and it says that they say that race is the number one issue in this country right now. Now, I don't, I don't even remember who took the poll. I don't know how many people were on the poll, but... That that to me is still that's a significant fact that anyone any group of black people would say that that's still a number one issue. I don't say that's significant because they're wrong. I just think that that's, it's significant because many of us, especially white, thought we were past this or at least getting past it, and it's become clear that we're not. But my question to you and and to the audience too is just is how much of this is media driven? Because I believe it has to be somewhat. There's it's it's there's already a narrative. I mean, we do have this storyline that's been put into place 
And I think that they just take stories now and, and even if they don't necessarily completely fit in, they put it into that category. Now, this one does. I mean, this guy was a white supremacist, it sounds like, that went and killed black people because they're black and because they're fucking our women, I think is what he said. Yes. By the way, our women is a term I've never used. And I'm glad to say it doesn't even make sense to me. Like, white women are not my women. And my people's, my men's women. You all right over there? You're spilling water all over yourself? Sorry. No, this Molly's is wine. And my oh, el- you st- oh, you did my your elbow did the thing where it slipped off the table. Like you're sitting at a table all drunk and you do the thing where the elbow slips off the end of the table. And at the most inopportune time when we're not even, we're talking about the least fun thing ever. <laughs> I, can't, I, can't, I had to turn away. I kind of like that about this show though, is that we can't be serious even when we're talking about something really serious. And that's okay. Yeah. This wine is so bad. <laughs> So I'm drinking a Ugh. fucking blue moon out of a can. You can't complain. Someone took the captain. Do you? So what do you Someone think? Someone took Someone, the captain. Someone stole a goddamn captain. My head. It's probably their bottle. Fucking bitch. No, no. Uh, what? I don't even know if it was a guy or a girl. So that was that was very was. disrespectful and, and unnecessary. Um, yeah, but do you think that? Do you think that we are? That it's as bad as what we do you, think. I'm sorry. What do you mean by media driven? Do you think this is media driven? Like, is, okay, is, is, what, is what media driven? The, the this race war in that I live my daily life and I interact with people of different races, and I don't feel like race is a fucking like top no. issue all time, all okay. the time between all of us. We're all like worried about race, and you're fucking white, and you're black, and you're brown. No, that like that doesn't. That's because not doesn't a part af- of my daily it life. It doesn't affect us on day to day basis. And that's that's the question. I guess I'm asking though is, does it affect everybody else that's a minority every day yes. to a total like to this degree? Because I feel like the the way the media is portraying this, that's what I'm, what I'm saying with this whole media driven thing is the way the media is portraying it is white people are looking to kill black people every day, especially cops. And I just don't see that. Now, there are there's some fucked up things happening, and there's definitely racism still. We've never denied that on this show. But I just I wonder if it's as bad as it's being made out to be, or is there something about how now everything's covered? And like I said, now there's a narrative, so now we're already looking for stuff like this. What do what do you think? Um, I mean, I think we don't think it's a problem because we're not the ones experiencing it. I, I I'm think not, that's the thing. Too, I'm not actually. going to go and say to my black friends. Well, the media hyperbolizes everything, and the media likes to just get a story, and the media likes to do this, and the media likes to do that, and that's the only reason why we're really talking about people like Trayvon Martin and and the Charleston shootings and blah 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 blah. When I have black friends saying to me, "This is a fucking problem," and they aren't they aren't like activists, we they don't live in an area where um, it, it it is a on a on a more day to day basis where they have They're kind not of in fear, Selma but, or, some, or, or, or or anywhere in South Carolina or anything, yeah, sure, or or just in in areas that are, that are there's more racial tension, yeah, um, and they're still saying, yeah, it's I, I can't get cabs, I get looked at funny, I get, and they're completely upstanding citizens that just because how they look. And they're telling me that that is something they experience. I'm not going to sit here and say, "Well, that's you know, it's just the media." It's just the <laughs> you know media. I, yeah, I, I, Get I, over I can't it. do that. And I don't think I see the conversations that are happening between my black friends on Facebook now, and it is not. This is a problem. Mm-hmm. This is this isn't people saying, "Oh, I've I've heard that happen to." Me. My friend wants this is like this is a fucking problem and i can't look at all of my uh, amazing diverse friend group and, and ignore that you know what i mean and, and and i think that we as white people have just we, we've taken this all for granted our entire lives absolutely just, but that's the point that's why it's so hard to overcome that, right that's why it's hard to overcome because we're not seeing this from the other side right we don't we're never going to see it from the other side but i hope that this dialogue at least is i mean us two white people in the midwest to be talking about this i think is a good thing i think is a step in the right direction i, I hope so i don't want to act like a fucking savior here no <laughs> I, I know, know, you know I, it's a little like a, self but, or, yeah it's, but but i think that there needs to be more recognition happening and saying that this 
This isn't, oh, your culture needs to fix it. Yeah. This is a your, this is a, this is a race problem for you guys. You guys go off and fix it on your own because this is a cultural issue. This is, this is a, this is a white and black problem that we need to solve together. Well, and it's funny because I've, I've seen, especially when I was my, my crazy neocon guy, I've seen stuff like where when something happens, when a white guy does something like what just happened in South Carolina, um, people like a, bl a black person will say something like, well, you know, that white culture, you know, you guys need to fix the way you guys do things. And we, as a white person, we go, well, that's fucking insane. I've never acted like that. Never thought like that. But sure. we've been, we, and I don't say that as personally, but just white people have been saying that about minorities forever. Right. <laughs> we always say, well, you fix well the it. problem in the black community <laughs> is that is the most condescending fucking yeah. fucked up statement in the first place. Because what is a black community? There isn't one. There are mega rich black people and there are mega poor black yep. people. They have nothing in common. And so I'm, I'm preaching the choir here because I think our listeners and you obviously know what I'm saying. But th there's... I think that really what we are seeing is is we just are so blocked off from this because we we're white. And we are. fucking we're so lucky that we are, too, yeah. by the way. But I, I, I hope that people start waking up a little bit more. It's, and I hope it doesn't take shit like this. I hope it doesn't take a guy going into a church and sitting there for an hour before he shoots everybody. God, that's fucked up. And then telling them it's because you're, you know, you're, you're taking yeah. our women. Our super women. fucked up. Because they're, they're white, they're ours. You understand? Know it's hateful, white men get the white women. Disgusting, racist individual. I mean, it's like beyond racism. I don't even know what to call them. Well, it's psychosis. White supremacist. I mean, that's, that's a good way to put it. Because white but he was. But can't we? Maybe and maybe here's the question. And I bet a black person wouldn't say that he was. But can't we just say he's psycho? He's just one psycho. If I'm a black guy, I, I wouldn't. I, I'm going, no. Well, There's other I, white people that hate people, too, and want to kill that's, everybody. Like, that's the problem is how we're explaining this guy because we're going to say in the media, he was quiet and weird and he had social time, issues. and He was withdrawn and, um, you know, and it's like, Probably took no, some ADHD I don't, drugs, too. Yeah. Uh, he, you know, he was depressed and he had a history of social problems. No, I don't fucking care what his fucking weird ass history was as a creepy white dude. This dude committed a, the worst of all hate crimes. Like, that's disgusting. That's all we need to talk about is the fact that we still have people in this country that, A, can get access to guns that easily. So maybe even way back when, if he did have mental illness, how did he get a gun in the first place? Mm. Different conversation. Yep. Doubling but, on top of that. But a val but a uh, interesting and, and valid conversation. Yes. It's like the worst the of two worlds thing, right yep. now is we have like this coming to a head of our issues with gun control and then our issues with with like the inherent racism that still exists in America. Like, and mental illness and prescription drugs. You put sure. all of that together, it's a fucking bad sure. mix. But I, I don't even want to talk about like the, the creepiness and the quietness no. and his the Jeffrey oh, he Dahmer was just shit. So weird. Like, I don't, I don't give two fucks. This dude, this dude's committed. I don't, I don't, I don't know if it's terrorism. People keep throwing out the word terrorism. I don't know. I don't know the difference. I would have to look it up. Like the actual legal definition of terrorism and a hate crime. But it's clearly a hate crime, at least. Well, to me, what he did is terrorist because I don't think he was just trying to scare and kill the people he killed. I think it was a sure. bigger thing. And to me, yeah. that's what terrorism is. Yeah. But okay, so that's where I want to take this quickly, and then we can, we can have some more fun. But I don't believe in hate crimes. I don't think that should be a thing. I don't think that we should change the penalty based on the motive. I think if I kill you, that's a hate crime, because obviously I hated you. I killed you. Why, why, do we, why are we changing penalties based? on what made you hate the person well i think because it it helps establish motive i mean i think that would be the only main reason for it is, who, is if it's a hate crime it's automatically a first degree murder but wait, okay what, let's just talk like movie talk because we're obviously we're not lawyers but when somebody kills somebody it you can you can have, your motive could be she broke up with me the motive could be i didn't like how the person looked the motive and that doesn't have to be a race thing there's all kinds of motive 
why are we? I think that and and and, and here's let me try to finish what I'm asking because it when you come to, when it comes to first degree murder, you have to prove that there was a motive, right? That it wasn't just in the heat of the moment. Yes. Hold on, maybe I'm proving my own point wrong. <laughs> no, so I I haven't really thought that in depthly about this for a while, but. Okay, let's just take the case where somebody k- kills somebody because they're gay, which has happened. Like it's people will beat the shit out of somebody just because That's they're considered gay. Considered a hate crime. But people have also beat the shit out of somebody because I think hate crimes they are said the wrong thing to them. Yeah, but too. hate but hate crimes are considered when when you when you are being killed just for who you are. That's what a hate crime is, and I think there needs to be a distinguishing okay. factor. Here's what I'm worried about: is there's is if. Thought police. I hate thought police. I, I, once the crime is committed, but once an think... assault or murder is committed, sure. but I don't think you should be, I, I don't know, because I don't trust whoever to decide what is a good motive or not a good motive. Well, you know what I mean? No, but I, but like, I are think... we saying that race or, or bigotry is a worse motive than something else? I don't know if they're ranking it as just more, but I think, isn't that what you're doing it? by making the penalty more? Isn't that ranking it? Isn't that saying this crime is a worse crime than some other crime? I don't know when it comes to first degree murder. Maybe we need a lawyer to talk. About I, right. I, this is. I mean, this is a good question. I think it's important to distinguish when someone has committed a crime just on the basis of who the person is. I think that's an important thing to know and to acknowledge. Like I, I, I because that that completely changes the reasoning for things and i think that there's it's always good to be aware of the reasoning for things okay because here's okay. in order to solve in order to possibly um limit future occurrences of the same thing it's good to know the reason why i think i completely understand your logic but let me just take it let me just see if this scenario makes sense if a guy if a cop kills somebody without the proper like necessary they're using unnecessary force or 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 going over they're overstepping their bounds in using deadly force why should that matter more because they did it because the guy was black i think that cop should be punished because they over use their force period be- because then you're going to ast- you can watch a pattern of someone doing something be there you're finding the motive to stop a pattern from happening but because if someone what, if someone has that's a, not what, but that uh, what a court does is always after the fact is it not I mean, I guess I say, what you're saying is, is to deter future behavior, possibly. Yeah. I don't know. So this is what it says. Hate crime generally refers to criminal acts that are seen to have been motivated by bias against one or more of the types above ethnicity, gender, identity, disability, language, nationality, physical appearance, religion, or sexual orientation. It, incidents may involve physical assault, damage to property, bullying, harassment, verbal abuse, insults, offensive graffiti, letters, hate mail. A hate crime law is a law that is intended to deter bias-motivated violence. Hate crime laws are distinct from laws against hate speech in that hate crime laws enhance the penalties associated with conduct that is already criminal under other laws, while hate speech laws criminalize a category of speech. I I think the most important thing about this is by, by acknowledging what a hate crime is and by prosecuting someone for hate crime, you are acknowledging that those biases are inherent in society and that they are happening and occurring and it, and, and it deters it from happening further, hopefully. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I think that is exactly the intent. But, like, and, I just and, and don't you, know if I agree with it or think it works. But I think it's important to know if a kid is being, if a kid is beaten up because they're gay, it's important to know that they it was because they were gay, not because it was like, you know, but what those if, two kids didn't like each other because it's a completely different scenario and it helps understand the mindset of the people involved. Okay. Last case. And I, I don't even know if I'm disagreeing with you. I'm just trying to kind of play that. It's a very there, specific but, example that probably wasn't very good. No, but, but what, okay. So, but let's just say a kid hate, you know, let's a couple of sixth graders. A kid hates the kid because he always wears green. So he beats the shit out of him because he always wears green. Now that is a judgment. That is a, that is that is, it's it's unnecessary and wrong. We wouldn't want to p- perpetuate, but you would never compare that to hating the person for being black. Right, because that's not a that's not a bias on an, on an individual. It's not a bias on an, on an an thing inherent in somebody. But it's a it's a thing that person hates, 
It's just, I guess, I maybe what I'm saying is that these are things that like can't be changed. You can't change your race. Okay. You can't okay. change choice your. Stuff. Okay, that makes more sense too. Yeah, you're you right. can't change your. But, but can't identity. you hate somebody for their choices? Or or is, are we only saying hate crimes only apply hate to things that aren't by are choice? Bias are biases against groups like minorities, race, gender, sexual orientation, things that you cannot choose. That that. You are being hated for who you are, not for the choices you're making. You don't have to do anything besides being who you are, and there's violence being committed against you just for that. Sure, and and this that's why this conversation 20 years ago would have been different because so many people still believe that being gay was a choice. Absolutely. So then you could make fun of it or, sure. or hate it or whatever because sure. it's like wearing green. Oh, yep. you, you could wear blue tomorrow. Okay. All right. I, I like what you're saying there. I, that makes a lot of sense. Um, and that's why I brought it up with you. All right. Let's come back in a minute here. We're already halfway through an hour. Oh, my god. We just gosh. crushed a half an hour. Uh, we'll come back. We'll talk some more fun stuff, I promise, right here on the Minnesota Pubcast. Reach for this one. <laughs> just when you thought it was safe to go back online. Let's turn it on. Kind of... <laughs> that took a very PG direction. Along comes this hit show. I'm constantly burping on stage. Hey, you heard about Madonna, right? (laughs) Twin Cities Hit Show with Rusty, Courtney, and Chuck. Had she fallen to the ground and her eyes rolled into the back of her head, what would you, Tim Mahoney, have done? I'd have tried to make out with her. (laughs) (laughs) Get in line. (laughs) The Twin Cities Hit Show with Rusty, Courtney, and Chuck airs live daily, 9.30 to 10.30 on the Alive and Social Network. Ever uh, swallowed a bug or choke like Courtney on stage? Yeah. I meant to do this. Join longtime radio personality and producer Kelly Guest and friend, CEO of Fantasy Gifts, Colleen Bertino, as they talk about all things sex. Men, women, lend them your ears and learn everything you wanted to know about sex and intimacy. Only here on the Alive and Social Network. so tired do you know this song i have listened to this song before it's really fucking good i don't know what it is but yeah you probably never know the, the artist is ratatat oh which, ratatat's great okay so i had never heard of them before yeah, the song good. is loud pipes it's just instrumental yeah. but god is it just it just rocks ratatat's oh fucking my god bomb. I love it listen to all ratatat stuff i, I will go check that's where out. i've heard it before oh my god sometimes so i listen to a lot of instrumental like albums like that like when i'm working and i completely forget who everybody is I'm like oh shit that's a good fucking band and i completely can't remember i think it being There's instrumental so makes it a lot harder to there remember are, them absolutely the voices are how you distinguish bands totally usually, so that, totally that but there's a lot of good instrumental bands out there no yeah, absolutely good djs um, and things like that so okay we, this aziz and sorry who again we've, oh, we've we're talked going back about. to that now yeah let's have some fun let's wait I do mean, you have the you, well, do the you have theme, our dating oh, theme theme hang theme. on Oh shit! I did have it. Oh yes, I do. I do. Okay, I do. great. Uh, See you in five it's, minutes. It's, yeah. It's, uh, well, talk to you in a little bit, guys. They say time heals a broken heart. You said on our very first date that you don't, you don't like, like flowers. That they're a waste of money. Every girl likes flowers, Gary. You say that you don't like flowers. I'm supposed to take that to mean that you do like flowers? This is not about. You're not. You're not. You're, you're, you're not getting it. That all a woman really wants you to do is ask her the correct questions that will allow her to run her fucking mouth. Everybody has their time. Everybody has their time. I mean, not everybody. There are people out there who there's just nobody for them. Mm-hmm. Yep. I wasn't looking for her like that. Well, Columbus wasn't looking for America, my man, but that seems to work out for everybody, didn't it? You're here. You know what I mean? Sometimes I never have a friend as a, as a female. You know, you, you always got to be fucking them. That's the only reason to be around them. 
Because I make bits like that. Um, all right. So, by the way, I spent the like, last five hours with my nephew, hit the pool, Uncle, and just why are hanging you out. Single? Oh, my God. He's, he is the coolest fucking kid in the world. I watched all of your Snapchats with him. <laughs> and he's, he's become, he knows he's entertaining now, which is oh, cool. You know yes. what I mean? Like, at first, when he's two years old, the Snapchat thing, he's like, why are you doing that? Like, give me that thing. Give me the phone. But now he's like, oh, I look cool in this hat. Oh, like, take a picture of me. Oh, he's, he's, he's figuring it out. How's He's, your mac and cheese? It's great. Just cold mac and cheese. Super cold. Um, can, I right. tell you, can I tell you what my sister's, my nephew said to my sister? Oh, my God. She would kill me. How old is your nephew? I'm saying this. He's 11. So he's going through that phase Ooh, where he is. Interesting age. He's about to get that. You'll recognize this right away, right when I say it. He was acting all quiet in the car. <laughs> She's going to fucking kill me if I, she listens to this. He was acting all quiet in the car. And uh, she's like, what's wrong? And he's like, you'll get mad at me if I tell you. And she's like, no, just tell me what's wrong. And he goes, well, I uh, don't like you, and I haven't for some time now. Uh, uh. <laughs> and when a, when a three-year-old or a three-and-a-half-year-old, like my nephew, says that, it's funny because, you know, he's kidding or not even it's not even that he's kidding you know he's not in depth enough to mean it totally an 11 year old you're kind of worried i'm a little worried you're at like, that oh, point shit. i'm like oh shit my kid fucking hates me and it's been for some time now oh my god and then tonight he goes he yelled at her he goes you're so overprotective and then in the same sentence he goes if i forget anything you need to bring it to the field for me <laughs> Oh, the modern day oh, child. The, the oh, age, my God. The age of whatever oh. we're calling it. <laughs> it's not the age of Aquarius. Um, so, okay, so where are we going there? Yeah, Aziz, I'm sorry. This is funny. Is that I'm the Times? Think that this piece? It's it a kinda, huge it kinda, deal, it sounds like. So he's coming out with a book. Yeah, and just to push the book. Right, and, it, and he's been doing, he, whoever his publicist is, is doing a great job on his book tour because he's hit like Fallon, he's hit John Stewart, or not John Stewart, but like one of those kind of political talk show guys. And he just sounds, he seems like, excuse me, he's staying in the news. Like yes. he, not even just making totally. appearances necessarily, but like, He's got this column. He just keeps seeing something about Aziz Ansari. Yes, and he, which is you know, so he wrote he wrote something for Variety. He wrote something for New York Times. He wrote something for I don't remember the other one I read, but he's he's kind of all hitting all the big spots. He's doing great. So his book is a combination of kind of his comedy and his commentary on um, dating in the modern age. And he also worked with this data strategist, this data collector, to kind of help him. They actually did a lot of research. Went out, interviewed thousands of couples and thousands of single people to figure out, you know, how people are relating to each other now and how people are dating. And they turned it into an actual, like kind of funny, but kind of helpful. I think how it's going to be, I have to read it, but no, I, this book sounds like you will gain knowledge and be entertained while and be entertained. It. Yeah. Exactly. So I thought it was kind of fascinating. So he's writing kind of all these essays getting ready for it. But the biggest find is that there's just too many fucking options now. Too many fucking options. Literally, it's almost too, many too easy to fucking date right now. Options. It, literally, again, yeah. Too many fucking options. <laughs> it, and I, I, and you didn't see the stuff t that I put up today. There's a, there's a column that I found today too, just about choosing. Uh, it, it's about. It, I don't remember. What the, there's a term now for it, but basically, there's this, there's this company now that's trying to figure out a way to just take choices out of your life. And they're, the way they're doing it is they're me, it's very positively intentioned. So it's to, make, to take things like your, what you're going to wear today. You just tell this program what you want to do that day, and it already tells you what you should wear. And, then, and it's... That's it's overwhelming. Uh, Overwhelmingly simple. Yes, right? <laughs> and, but so the, the point of it is to take 
those decisions that you don't necessarily need to be making on a daily basis out of your life. But what scares me about that is, is who determines what are meaningless or meaningful decisions in a day, especially like if you're going to say something like what you wear that day is something that just somebody else can just choose for you. I'm pretty sure most people consider that a pretty important part of their day is choosing what they're going, how they're going to present, present themselves that day. Um, but to go back to what we're saying though, with the Ansari column, I it is, and I hadn't looked at it that way necessarily, but when you went to the bar to get a date, which, you know, I did when I was 21, 22. That, that was like, I was that just was thinking, how I was thinking about this this morning, how TV shows still portray people dating by as, meeting each other. By, like a guy goes up and, and asks for somebody's number. I can't even fucking tell you the number of times that has happened to me because I can't, I don't know. Because it hasn't happened. No, you don't mean, like, ask a girl for her number at the bar anymore. But you that's can, not even a you thing. You guys, you can. And no, you know that's what? true. If she says no, then move on. It's okay. But, but. And same with girls. You can ask people for their number. It's okay. But why would you go through the humiliation of getting denied face to face when you can swipe right? Because it's easier. <laughs> what is the swiping right? Because I think the swiping right is easier. Sometimes I just think talking in person is easier. Well, no, I, and I get where you're going, coming from there. Because, yes, we, we eventually we've got to throw these fucking smartphones out the window. No. And just be humans again. Because we've it, it has gone to where now, in, in the column, I don't remember the exact wording, but it was something like this guy, you know, he's going through, and, and I think Aziz is there with him or whatever. And it, maybe it's part of one of their uh, little studies or whatever they're doing. And the guy like says, "Oh, she's really attractive, but uh, you know, I'll keep looking." And swipes left. And Aziz is like, "Dude, like she's really good looking." And what like there's, what do you have against her? He's like, "Ah, eh, she likes the Red Sox." She likes the fucking Red Sox, and she was super now cute. And if, he was not that cute. If That's you're at the said. bar with your buddy, or you know, as a gal, you two gals, and you're out, and you see a couple of guys across the way, and you, you one of you actually has the balls to go say something to each other. There is no way that being a so and so fan is going to come between no. you going home that night if you guys are into each other. But when you have fifty other faces to see while you're swiping, that Red Sox fan becomes a big right enough now. deal. What the fuck? I know. Like, and this is—it's literally we but have too many comes, options. I know, but then it comes down to chemistry, right? I mean, I don't think we're—I think the. Genuine chemistry hasn't gone away. Do you know what I mean? Like, I think if you if mean, I like were to once go you on, actually meet, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he's, they're saying there's so many options. We're always searching for the best one. <sighs> once we actually meet the people and we're dating the people, I like to think that actual real chemistry and like the acknowledgement of it hasn't completely lost us. No, I think it's absolutely still there. But here's the difference. Like this guy, he took a weird selfie. <laughs> He's perfectly cute. Oh, look at it. But it's a bad He's riding selfie. his bike. <laughs> Let's see. Well, he had... I'm... No, he has... Let's see. No, he has a Red Bull drinking on St. Patty's see, Day. I don't even want to see what guys are trying to do to impress on Tinder. Because... Um, this guy has... Visually, that's not our game. That's just not how we roll. Oh, let's see. That. And this guy's wearing a Kansas City Royals shirt, which is a problem. See? See, do you see how fucking judgmental you are? I'm. I know. I'm trying to be. Okay, come on. I have to be judgmental about him. He took a gym <laughs> selfie. This is a picture of his arms. Well, what what I've what I've found oh, now Peter. is the most yeah, interesting cute. to see is on t on girls Tinder see, profiles. Do you know what I just said? I what? said Peter. He looks cute. I open up. Oh, no. <laughs> That's why I have no hope for myself. Oh, no. I opened up the second picture and I said, oh. There's a brim on his hat. <laughs> he has a brimmed hat. <laughs> you mean like a brimmed winter hat? A brimmed winter hat. I can't date anybody with a brimmed winter hat. <laughs> See, we think. See, here's the thing. I don't think like, we actually do have I more met, options. We I, think we do, and that's why we're single. If I met Peter, he'd pro I'd probably really like him. I could just make him throw away the hat. <laughs> <laughs> that's a 
That's true. Let's see. And that, that is actually true. And that's what you women always try to do anyway. You just tweak us. So you just, you know what? You're really cute. You're really awesome. Except for that hat. Let's just get rid of that hat. And he'd be perfect for you. And you guys can do that. Shit. We as guys can't do that shit. But you guys can. Sure, you can do that. Yeah, we can try. You can do it. But we can't change anything you don't want to change. But that's also true for you. Like, totally we're true not going to change anything you don't want to change. Or okay, that I'll we didn't up. already want. I'll get off Tinder now, but it's kind of fun to Tinder on. Tinder on the show? Um, do you know you don't have Periscope? You know what we should do? Because I I want to just talk about this quick before we break. Let's do a live Periscope now. For you that don't, don't know do what that. the hell this is, I don't care if you want to. You're about to. This is going to be seen worldwide. Hey, I got the first ask if we were together tonight. Oh, you mean like dating? Yeah. Oh, I got by the somebody first one. here in the house. Mm-hmm. Is that from a person like, that oh, listens? Sorry. Or do they just they've only do listened. a show together? They've only listened to like one. Okay. So I was like, oh, I thought it was like kind of clear when we were on the show. And they're like, oh, I've only listened to one okay. or two. Yeah. Yeah. If you listen to the show a few times, you would know we're not dating. But if you, yeah, I, I mean, I've had people ask me like, oh, are you like with that girl that you do a podcast with? Like with that are, you know, completely removed from the actual show and I've never heard it. Um, but oh, okay, well, we don't actually have to do a live Periscope right now. But have you have you actually even seen Periscope? Like yeah. what this is? And For, then you can live. You can live stream. It's, like you can ask questions at the person, and then they can respond. Yeah, it's live streaming it's Snapchat. So strange. And but what I find fascinating about it is there's got to be a way to use this. With with a purpose, especially with like a podcast, there's got to be a way for us to do like a pre-show Periscope to get other people around the world that would never listen to the show to possibly listen for to sure. It. So that's where I want to take it. Possibly, that'd be but cool. This people, there there are seventeen-year-old people. Well, I'm people I'm, to the, to the people. Hey, people. Hey, you people, people. listening. There's sixteen-year-old girls right now all across the world. They're just sitting there chatting up with the with perverts and guys oh. saying, "Show your boobs, show your boobs." Like that's all because you know the your, internet. Did they show their? No, boobs? you can't. It's no nudity on there. Oh, okay. at, at least I'm sure. I mean, obviously it's live, so you well, could, yeah. but you get kicked off. But, okay, so you get kicked off. But so the whole point, I mean, it's not supposed to be pornographic. Which, by the way, if it was, it would it would be rocking every app on the world or in the world. But um, it would break a lot of laws too. It probably but, wouldn't last so well, long. Well, right, because it'd be ch- there'd be a lot of child porn with it. Yep. But what what's what's so interesting about it is it is live. It's live video. You can follow anybody doing anything in their life. I, I'm I'm actually waiting for celebrities to really embrace this a little more. I know Howie Mandel is doing it, and there are others. But there's, for, I mean, if you're a celebrity, you could do it for two minutes while you're sitting on your patio at your mansion, smoking a stogie or doing whatever you want to do, having a glass of wine, Be fine. and just talk. And you'll get twenty thousand people to watch it, and then they might you. And then at the end of it, you go. Catch me on NBC at seven. I mean, it's it's all about plugging yourself, but totally. it would work so Plug well. Plugging yourself. Well, I had to take that somewhere else. Uh, speaking <laughs> of uh, plugs, uh, why don't we take a break and uh, plug this up quick and uh, be right back. Hey, everybody. This is comedian Paul Mercurio, and I'm very excited to say that I packed up my podcast, The Paul Mercurio Show, which wasn't my first choice for a name. My first choice was Go Ahead, Touch It. But apparently that didn't test well. Well, I'm taking my podcast and I'm moving it to the Alive and Social Network, which is weird because I'm neither alive nor very social. I've interviewed a few people you might know, like Sir Paul McCartney. Yeah, that guy. He was in a band or something. I'm not sure. Stephen Colbert, Bob Costas, Jay Leno, Stone Cold Steve Austin, Kristen Chenoweth, and many, many more. I've won Emmy and Peabody Awards for my work on The Daily Show. I've had my own Comedy Central special, been on HBO, and I'm excited to be part of the new network. Paul Mercurio shows available on iTunes, Android, and available at paulmercurio.com. Listen to my show every week. Every week you will get rich. How? I give you a foolproof method to go out and make $100,000 without ever leaving your couch. Okay, that's a lie. But the podcast, it's good. The term foodie can sometimes come across as a tickle pretentious. BT and Lydia are here to demystify the term and reclaim it for the sake of good food. Their weekly podcast brings in fellow foodies and culture creators from the Twin Cities to talk about all things food. Find this duo only on the Alive and Social Network. Next 
weekend. Where? Milwaukee. I told you I'm going to Milwaukee next weekend. Yeah. No. Did I not? Oh, you're gonna fucking love it. Get as close as you can and just fucking rock out. No, I, I saw him last year for a couple songs, and it made me go, "I have to see him this year." God, he's good. There's just nothing else like this out right no. now. He he's so, and he's what he's the music he's doing is something that has been done before. But there's this just is Gary nothing. Clark Jr. You guys, yeah, by, by yeah, the way. if you don't know what we're talking about. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to Milwaukee next weekend. Going to two Twins games in Milwaukee. That's gonna be fun. fun. That's gonna be really fun. The Brewer Stadium. Yeah, and I've never, have you ever been there? Uh, no, no, I haven't. I, I haven't either. I've driven past it and it looks super yep. cool, but never been in there. It'll be fun. Um, it'll be really fun. It'll be really, really it'll cool. Be super um, fun. Okay, just because we're us and <gasps> it's a recurring theme on this show, we got to go over that Game of Thrones finale. For those of you who haven't seen it yet, how much time do we have left? By off. the way. Uh, Did not you much. say fuck off? Oh. Yeah, fuck off. Oh. <laughs> go ahead and fuck off. You've listened to 50 minutes of the show. You can, you can turn her off. No, I'm kidding. We'll come back in two minutes. But um, no, the, there's a lot of... The thing about that damn show is a lot happened, but nothing happened. Like the entire season. And you can say that about every season. It drives me nuts. I mean, okay, the first season, the, the yeah. finale, obviously that's a huge deal. But well, what happened at the end of the first season? Ned, oh, was that Ned Stark? That's when Ned, yeah. That's who I'm thinking. Oh, this guy's gonna be on TV for the next five years. Oh, and yeah. then, you know. well, that that was the first time you were really like given a taste of Game of Thrones. Exactly. They're like, hey guys, you think this guy's important? Bye. And that's what we do. <laughs> and and I love that about the show. That's really cool about the show. But I I, I feel like it's just a build up, a build up, build up, build up. And nothing really they, happens. They're not gonna do that. That's not gonna happen. Oh, come on. Are they are they for fucking real? And like every other movie, someone like you know. Arrows the arrows the guy that's chopping off his head and the heart, and then he you know gets up and fights away. Not in Game of Thrones. No, and, and <laughs> like I have a buddy that he's always said like I, I hate all these fucking shows where all the stars always survive. Like he totally. he, he hated True Blood for that reason, which and I oh, did too. God. That did no anyone one ever up, fucking died on that show. Did anyone end up actually dying? I don't on think True so because you would turn into a vampire like. Usually, like that was the only way you die on that show. Vampires can die too, right? But none of the main ones ever fucking did. No, that was one of those things about that show was everybody made it through almost every season. And God, I loved that show for the first like two seasons. Oh, True Blood was was weird and gross and great, sexual and and super sexual. Wrong, yeah, everything about it was just so wrong. (laughs) And then, but Game of Thrones has taken that to a different level and said nobody's sacred. We'll kill anybody. Um, well, they're hanging on to the ones that I think a lot of people would. I think they do a good job at hanging on to the ones that really keep that are dynamic on the screen, though. I mean, uh, Ned Stark, as much as I love Ned Stark, I didn't give two fucks about Ned Stark. You say that now. There, but there's other people out there. Like, I didn't really care. Huge spoiler alert. I didn't care that Jon Snow died. No, I didn't either. I love I love Kit Harrington. I love Jon Snow. He's one of the biggest characters. Yes. I look forward to whether he's going to come back or not. See, Different discussion. And there you go. And that's where, but we, that's where we go with it. I'm not, I'm not, like when he died, I was like, really? Okay, fine. You fucking kill him off. And, but I would not feel the same way if Khaleesi was killed. And I would not feel the same way if Tyrion Lannister was killed. And I wouldn't feel the same way if kind of some other, like Brienne of Tarth. There are some people on that show that, really are um i think inherently we all root for and like light up the screen in a really interesting way and they really haven't killed off many of those people well and i think we were always supposed to kind of not supposed to like john snow in a way sure partially because he's a bastard but then also because he's this pretty boy bastard that to jump right through the ranks and like everything about him is kind of like fuck you you didn't earn any of this and but he did but he did. No, that's just it. He did, though, too. And then, but so we, so you've heard all this, the twist about I've how totally he might live and, and I, why I'm, his mom is. I'm on board with all this because I, I was like reading, too. I was reading months ahead now, way back when I'm like, what is all this talk with Jon Snow possibly being, you know, like a Targaryen or, um, what was the other? Who, like, what? Who are his parents? There's a well, great his mom is supposed to be a Targaryen, I suppose. And his father which is makes supposed to be a... what's her name is cousin, I think. Yes, but yeah, I don't remember what his father was. It was like I gotta look it up, but now. it wasn't Stark. 
That's the thing. And then, and then it was all too consequential for me for Melisandre to come back all of a sudden all weepy after Stannis is killed. And John and her had this very intense interaction a few episodes ago that was yeah. like, you have king's blood. You don't know your power. I know your power. You will realize and your let's power. let's fuck, because right? that's what she does. And then she she thinks that Stannis for a while is like the... is. She's think, seen the visions of She's him. seen the he's visions, supposed to be and the he's the king. He's and supposed he, to be on the, on the like, whatchamacallit throne. Re- Reese Yvonne or something like that. I can't remember the name of it, but it's someone who's supposed to, this king who's supposed to kind of come back from the dead. And I think she's going to be completely fucking wrong about it, and I think oh, she and realizes it, and it's going to be Jon Snow. So, hang on, let me pull it up. No, there's a, well, okay, and just so for those of you that are listening that have seen this, the, the theory behind this is that, they got to burn his body because he could become a white wa- or a whitey or whatever they call it. Is it white? <laughs> a whitey, a white. I don't think it's whitey, but you know what I mean. And then, uh, oh God, hold on. I need to run. I need to run the restroom. You got to finish. No, this. what? Yes. Hold on. I'll be back in thirty seconds. God, Keep seriously. Yes. I've you had. Do, do you have to pee okay. that bad? Hang on. I'm gonna look up what Jon Snow conspiracy theories are. Okay, Jon Snow conspiracy theories. Okay, here are the Jon Snow conspiracy theories. Oh, God, I have to do this by myself. Okay, number one, Jon Snow warged into his direwolf. We haven't seen Jon warg on the show, but book fans are convinced that the leader of the Night's Watch could have transferred his soul into the body of Ghost, his direwolf. As Jon dies in the books, the last words he says is Ghost, ghost which notably did not happen on the show. How appropriate that the direwolf named Ghost would capture the soul of his master. Okay, kind of lame. But maybe. Number two, Melisandre brings John back from the dead. We know from her attempted seduction of him that Melisandre sees something of worth in John. Perhaps she has her own theories about the true parentage. Now that Stannis is presumably dead, Melisandre needs a new messiah. We haven't seen Melisandre bring anyone back from the dead, but back in season three, the Red Woman did meet Thoros Amir, a priest who resurrected a man six times using the power of the Lord of the Light. John is reborn in fire. The Night's Watch has been careful to burn the bodies of the dead to prevent them from coming whites. They're called whites. Whites, not whitey. If you, di- if you subscribe to the R plus L equals J theory about John's mother, this could have some interesting implications. Okay, the R plus L plus J theory. I'm opening up a new page. I'm so, this was the best time for me to walk away to because it was a reading time and you don't yep. want me reading anything. Okay. So this is perfect. As far as John Snow knows, he's the bastard of Ned Stark. But some fans think Ned lied about John's parentage. John may in fact be the set, son of Ned's sister, Lyanna Stark, and the former king, Rhaegar Targaryen. Okay, that means that's that John so Snow was could have even more of a claim to the throne than Daenerys because he's a Stark oh, right. and he's a Targaryen. He's the son of the king. Yes. Wow. This theory is known as the R plus L plus R plus L equals J, and it's elegantly summed up in the video by Alt. Okay, we don't have to watch the fucking video. No. But I think that that is, out of all the conspiracies that I've read, I'm like, that makes the most sense to me in terms of Melisandre getting, you know, this person, like, Stannis's kind of whole thing confused. Like, I think she's actually confusing him with Jon Snow's, like, you know, his kind Her of... visions are off. Yeah, his visions. Whatever. I don't know. I, well, what I find cool about that... Okay, first of all, did you hear, though, that he, the actor himself, was told he's done? He was told he's done. But they could all be saying that. I'm not trusting any of it. Why Why would he say, oh, no, I'm coming back next season? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, come on. Like, <laughs> like what a, he has so nothing else he very, could say. That's a very good point. <laughs> he has, that he's yeah. not going to be like, yeah, guys, they fucking kill me, but I'm coming back. <laughs> And say it before the finale, too. Like, hey, guys, don't worry about tonight's show. Don't worry. It's all good. Yeah, that's not going to go over very well with HBO. Uh, yeah. Okay. But, well, okay. I, I just, but the, the, way they, the way he spoke in that article, he really made it. Because I think they were even saying, like, hey, we, we know this is probably bullshit. And he's like, seriously, you guys know more than me then. But, again, that would be the smart PR thing to say. That would be. <laughs> I, I think they kind of contractually have to say, I'm not returning well, if they are returning. Right. No, if, if he is coming back, he was told, you fucking say a word and we will kill you. Like, you will be killed off. Um, we're about out of time. You got, okay. do, you, do you have anything? No, it was, like it, was a, it was a good series, season finale. Um, the thing with uh, 
Cersei was really brutal and hard to watch. Um, and yeah, I don't the, think she deserved walking it. Walking through the streets naked. Yeah, it was really intense. And I was. Ne- I've never been happier. I, I like seeing I her put through did, shit. I don't think she did. I think she's horrible. Literally put through shit, man. She was literally put yeah. through shit. She's a horrible person. Um, yeah, but I think all of her intensity and her, I think, is all driven by her children. And I can't blame her for that. Yeah, no, she's a psychotic mother. Yeah. That, that is what I it mean, is. I mean, she loves her children, and I just, I would never want anyone to go through that. But of all the people that are horrible on the show, she's right. It doesn't, she's pretty normal, so. It didn't hurt my soul to watch her go through that. It's like, it did to watch the, the steak burning scene was, the week before. That, uh, that was a lot harder for me. Peace out to you. Princess. Princess. Bye, Princess. Prince. What was her fucking name? No idea. No idea either. <laughs> no fucking clue. Well, we really didn't care that much, apparently. Oh, I guess not. All right, well, uh, sorry for taking the week off. That was not intentional. We'll be back next week. Hopefully, I'm going to Milwaukee and ship, and we'll figure it out. Thanks for listening. See you. Bye-bye.